Most of the world's seas have long been lawless places, governed by what are pretty much handshake agreements between state leaders and sailors. Now, some countries are trying to change that, with mixed results. Turkey and Greece are embattled in one of the most intense maritime disputes in this century. Tensions got hotter after Turkey sent a research vessel and a small navy fleet into a disputed portion of the Mediterranean. The two countries have been fighting for years over who controls this natural gas-rich part of the sea. Greece drove its boat right out to meet them, resulting in a mild collision. Then France motored in with its own fleet to, you know, chill everyone out. Now Turkey is accusing France of trying to bully it into submission. EU ministers are trying to solve the problem diplomatically, but they pretty much all agree that Greece has claim to the water, not that Turkey seems to care. Yani artık Avrupa Birliği'nin de Yunanistan'ı şımartmak yerine, koşulsuz destek vermek yerine aklı selim düşünmeye e, davet etmesi gerek. In the Gulf of Guinea, better known as Pirate Alley because its high seas host 90% of global maritime kidnappings, Nigeria is trying to address its pirate problem. After 47 attacks in just the first quarter of this year, the government finally made three convictions under its new piracy law. The court fined three men who pled guilty to hijacking a tanker and securing a $200,000 ransom for the crew. Still, experts think pirates won't care much about this law because breaking the law is kind of their whole thing. Facebook has taken a step in the wrong direction, straight into the ocean off Oregon's coast. The company was attempting to lay a transoceanic fiber optic cable owned by Amazon and SoftBank when the drill bit broke. Instead of picking up the broken equipment, Facebook just left it there. While that might seem like Facebook's just joining soda companies and filling the ocean with trash, the abandoned tools run the risk of leaking drilling fuel and contaminating the groundwater. And turns out the company waited seven weeks before owning up to the local authorities about their little snafu. Now, Facebook claims that an environmental specialist has determined there's no negative environmental or public health concerns, but it would be dangerous to try to get their stuff back. Activists aren't convinced, and they're not surprised either. They say this is the logical result of Oregon's excessively welcoming position towards these underwater cable projects. A 987-foot tanker is about to add to the ocean's pollution by falling apart in an area where whales nurse and threatening delicate coral reefs. The Japanese tanker crashed off the coast of Mauritius at the end of July and has leaked nearly 4,000 tons of fuel, leading to what some scientists have called the country's worst ecological disaster. Mauritian police arrested the ship's captain, and some reports say he might have run the ship to ground because he was distracted by an onboard birthday party. President Trump hasn't managed to seal off the U.S. to migrants at the southern land border, but now he's setting his sights to the water. The administration is trying to install floating barriers that could block off rivers along the U.S.-Mexican border and push the ocean border out further into the Gulf of Mexico. They're soliciting companies to build the so-called buoy barrier system, but it's going to require a lot of tweaking. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says the barrier would need to keep swimmers from climbing or jumping over it while also minimizing underwater debris. So it sounds like it'll work about as well as the great big beautiful wall Trump's been harping on. 